Hello everyone. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to Gaming Scripture and Commentary. Christian gamers playing a game. Talking about Jesus through his word and commenting on anything that happens to come up. This is Sunday Scripture. Welcome to episode number 26. My intent is to take Sunday Scripture, which aka by the title, and sermon and discuss it with all you, with you all. Today, Matthew 7, 12, the golden rule. I am Ken, aka Ken, if you haven't figured that one out yet. And we always want to make sure that this time we give to God, and let his will be done and not ours. So let's start with the prayer. Merciful God, you made us in your image with a mind to know you, a heart to love you, and a will to serve you. But our knowledge is imperfect and our love inconstant, our obedience incomplete. Help our soul to breathe after you, after a dependent devotion to you, to grow in grace more fully and freely every day. Help us see that we are only truly live when we live to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everyone, get out your Bible, where it's the old-fashioned kind, you know, paper, the, the binding, or an app on your phone or tablet, okay, or a website such as BibleGateway.com, Bible.com, or Blue Letter Bible.com, or something else you might, might be reading. I and we're going from the ESC tradition, and of course, if you are watching us on Twitch, I have it linked down below, and if I have me watch on YouTube or other places, I hope we have a link there too. So while you're looking up that verse, I just want to remind everyone that uh, if you have any prayer requests, please post them either in the Twitch chat or discussion area, whatever platform you're watching this on. Of course, if you don't feel comfortable doing that directly, go ahead and send me it privately. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, sayings, tips, etc., yeah, whatever you else want to say, please let me know. Post them. I'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to get to uh, um, learn and grow. Iron sharpens iron, so I don't can't do that unless you do that for with me. If the content is something you like, you want to share it, please go ahead, like, and subscribe, and I'll like to check out other stuff on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Raptor, Tumblr, or someplace I forgot to mention. I do have more things on uh, Tumblr, my uh, uh, Canton Live blog. Dot, wait, Kindler, Canton Live blog. Tumblr. Com. Okay, it's a, it's linked somewhere. Okay, so anyway, check it out. Um, so yeah, Golden Rule. Uh, one more thing before I head out, before I go on this way, I want to make sure that I'm curious about something that else that might be automatic and it's not. So, okay. I'm just curious. Anyways, um, the golden rule, we are still... Sorry, I'm just checking out my Twitch stream why it's also in black. So I'm offline, but I'm not offline. So I am streaming, so I gotta make sure I'm... Yeah, those technical challenges. Oh, okay, I'm back. Okay, anyways, golden rule. Um, you know, part of the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus Christ was teaching us, we've been talking about it for, for several while now, is a part of the golden rule. It's a very simple one verse thing, but it has such impact in so much things, and everyone's heard about it. Even those who aren't Christians have heard of the golden rule. Um, we want to make sure that we understand it correctly and make sure that we're not distorting or misrepresenting it to anyone. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Okay, the law and the prophets, you know, we just came out of, you know, <coughs> when you go back to uh, 7, 1 through 11, you see a lot of uh, intro into um, what's happening in the Golden Rule, which I just thought about just now. So hang on with me. I'm going to get back to my BibleGateway.com and punch this in. Because there's about the judging others part. We had that earlier in our discussion about judging others. So after we've done all this, okay, and also by, he also forwarded with the ask, it will be forgiven. It will be given to you, okay? So the last thing he said before this was if you if you then who are evil known how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him then he said so whatever you wish that other would do to you do also to them for this is the law and the prophets he follows up with the um, narrow gate you know we're gonna do that another time or i already did it so only faith working here through love you know at our funeral our achievements won't be regretting our passing away you know, it, achievements mean nothing, okay? You know, the sum, and you can think about it, the sum, the, sum, the sum of the Sermon on the Mount and the Bible 
you know, the, to whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. But this is the law of the prof, law and the prophets. So first thing we're going to talk about is, this, is because he did the sum of the Sermon on the Mount. Well, Jesus didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Remember that. You know, and, and think about what he said here. He's actually summing up the Sermon on the Mount in these just general words, okay? But there it is, okay? And that's how we want, we want, we want to be treated right. We want to be treated well. We want people to respect us and, and be nice to us. And I think about, shoot, how, how can we do that? If, expect that if I can do it to somebody else. Matthew 22, 37 through 40. says, and he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and the first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Two greatest commandments are relational. You think about Matthew, okay? One of these, one of the, one, on these two hang all the law and the prophets. You love your neighbors, do to them what you what we want them to do to us. Don't start with others. Start with yourself. Again, how are you gonna expect others if you're not gonna do it yourself? It's a not it's not a if you scratch your back, I'll scratch your back. Hey, okay? you know, or well, I catch your back, you scratch my back, okay? It's not that, okay? Not a magic formula or manipulative words, okay? It and there's no limits to it. Jesus says whatever. You know, imagine a community that followed this rule. Imagine a community that followed this rule. The thing is, though, is even in churches today, we don't always see that happening. It's kind of sad. But can you imagine if everyone did this? It's everyone. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. Wow, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Why have we not figured this out yet? It's been 2,000 years since Jesus spoke to us. You know why, don't you? If you haven't, if you haven't heard before, well, well, you hear it again, okay? Sin. Sin. The golden rule is impossible if we try to do it ourselves. Maybe we need someone to help us out, like Jesus. So how are we to love others? Yeah, you know, why why don't we follow the golden rule? You know, that's a good discussion point. It'd be great if people were to watch this and comment on that. Why don't we follow the golden rule? We feel like we have others, people. We have to do you have to have revenge? You know, revenge is mine. You know, or now, the revenge is best served cold, if it's a Klingon thing, right? But you know, what excuses do we give them? That what excuses do we give when left to ourselves? Ah, uh, they don't deserve it. Really? Do we deserve it? I have problems of my own. Well, yeah, I get that, but don't they have problems too? Uh, what if they mistreat me? Well, that's always a possibility, okay? But gee, that's a that's kind of sad because everyone might do that, right? Hey, well, I don't feel like it. Well, that's a that's a big one, okay? I mean. A lot of folks out there probably don't feel like it. They don't feel like they want to. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that, okay? You know, but it's sad. It's really sad. But think about it, right? Those are the excuses we have. We need something that is transformative to remove our excuses. Hmm, what do that is? Huh? The gospel breaks down the arguments that limit the way we love. Think of what God does for us. We don't deserve it. But God loves us, so how can I or us or we withhold from others? Wait a minute, what? If God loves us, so how can we withhold from others? Hmm. You know, they say the best way to destroy your enemy is to make them your friend. When I was younger, I never understood that. I mean, it's like, oh, we're going to kill them? You know, like. And otherwise now, oh, making your friend it means you're no longer your enemy. <gasps> you destroyed your enemy because they're now your friend. Very cool. Very good. You know, so think about it, right? God loves us. So how can we withhold from others? So what's the cause and the cure for our lack of love? Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 5.1 says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. And Romans 15.1 says, We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. The cause and the cure for lack of love? God. His scriptures, his words, his gospel, his meaning, his life, his resurrection. Sacrifice for us. His forgiveness has not become real to us if we're not going to be doing love. 
His call hasn't become too real to us. His love hasn't become real to us. <coughs> we can't do it on our own. That's the one thing I get from the Bible and one thing I get from all the scriptures and reading it is how perfect I am and how much I am loved by God, but also how much I need to depend upon him because there's no way I can traverse this life without him. I can't be a loving, caring, generous, kind, whatever, God-fearing man without my, without God helping me. You know, becoming a Christian, God rewires us. He rewires us. So let's, let's, framing, let's frame our thoughts on living well, on loving well. Framing our thoughts on loving well. Key point, well-loved people love well. Since, since God did not wait for me to love him, he started it first. God loves me first before I loved him. So guess what? I'm a loved person, so I can love well. I'm not perfect. Please don't ever think that as a Christian you're ever going to find people who are perfect. We're not perfect. No way. So cultivate a life where we live close to Jesus. That's how we really become loved, uh, loved well. Seek to grow in empathy with what they are experiencing. Crawl into their world, even if we haven't experienced it. Empathy is when you actually you understand what they're doing because you've been there, done that. You know, sympathy is when you sympathize. You go, oh, I'm sorry about that. I don't, don't know you. Okay, I don't know. I've never been there too. Empathy is, is is where you actually been there too. So obviously, if we don't understand exactly where they came from, try to crawl into their world. Okay, find out more about them. Be respectful. Do it in a way that's not in a loving way. Consider concentric circles of need. You know, that that puddle. You're the the rock hitting the water, right? So. You know, family, friends, co-workers, consider that. You know, this, remember, what you're trying to do is trying to frame your thoughts on loving well, right? If you don't love your family, how can you love your friends? How can you love your co-workers, you know? And take the next step and ask for forgiveness when you miss it. We've all forget. We've all forget that. We always miss it, you know? But take the next step and ask for forgiveness. It's never too late. It's never too late. One minute, 10 minutes, 10 years, 100 years, never too late. So imagine the countercultural community that Jesus is calling us to. Imagine, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. So guess what? Let's get to work in Jesus' name. There we have it, the golden rule. So i love to hear back from anyone, hear back what's going on, what their thoughts are. But I would love to, for people to engage in the conversation when we're doing these broadcasts so I can get a better chance to understand what I'm seeing and hearing and help people out. I, I truly wish that anyone watching this broadcast is, is blessed. If those who are seeking will find, and those who have found will become more nourished, and those who are um, feel like they are stronger can be more sharpened, and myself sharpened too. So um, as always, if you have any practice like before, any prayer requests, go ahead and post it. If you're feeling somewhat uh, private about it, find a way to do it privately. Um, I, I have spots where you can do that. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, questions, whatever you're going to do, let me know. Post them. Love to hear from you. And like and subscribe and check stuff out. I have other places too. So appreciate so much for being here with me. And thank you for taking your, taking your time. And God bless you. Good night.